Hello viewers, this is Wagada Ronald taking you through today's tutorial on further integration. And in today's lesson, we shall talk about integration by parts. So this method is used for integrating a product of two functions where one is a polynomial and the other is not or where both functions are not polynomials. Remember, in the method of changing the variable, it was used for integrating function, a product of two functions, but both functions were supposed to be polynomials. So in cases where it's a product of two functions, but one function is a polynomial and the other is not, we use the method of integration by parts or in the case where there is a product of two functions but both functions are not polynomials we still use the method of integration by parts so let's see how it is used we already know that if u and v are functions of x then the derivative of this product is go is equal to u dv dx plus v du dx I think you remember this expression of product formula under differentiation 1. So putting integrals on both sides with respect to x gives that. So in this case, we have put integrals on both sides to come up with this expression. And remember, integration and integration is the reverse of differentiation. What does that mean? It means that this, sim this integral of this derivative it can cancel out so that you remain with only u v. So this is the previous such expression we got, and when you cancel this, we we'll come up with u v being equal to this integral on this side. Now, when we make this the subject, we shall come up. With, it means that this one goes this side to become uv minus this integral which is this expression now this expression is the expression used under integration by parts and we shall see how it is used so we shall start with problem one problem one says that find the integral of x cos x with respect to x then you realize that this is a product of two functions, but this is a polynomial and this one is not. This is a trig function. Therefore, we use integration by parts. How? We let one function to be equal to x and another one be to be equal to dv dx. Now, the one which is equal to, is let to be equal to dv dx must be a function that can easily be integrated. So, in this case, both can be easily integrated. Therefore, it's better to let this one be the dv dx so that this one, this other function x, when you differentiate, it will tend to a constant. For example, if, I, if u is equal to x, du dx will be equal to u. So in cases where both functions can easily be integrated, it is better to let the one which is a polynomial to be u and the other one which is not a polynomial to be dv dx so in this case dv dx is this therefore when i integrate this i'll come up with v which is equal to sine x and when i get that i have to remember my expression for integration by parts that integral of u dv dx d, with respect to x is equal to uv minus the integral of v du dx with respect to x so in this case u is this and the v dx is that therefore for this part it will be equal to integral of x cos x which they want then here it is uv so i have to look for u which is this and multiplied by v which is that so in the end, I'll come up with x sine x, which is this. Then minus the integral of v du dx. I have to look for v, which is sine x, and also look for du dx, which is 1. 
so 1 times this will give me sine x which is this part so what now what i'm left with is to get the integral of sine x and when i integrate sine x i'll come up with cos x but this cos x will be a negative so the negative and this negative will give me a positive that is why we are seeing a positive value here so in the end the integral of x cos x with respect to x will be equal to x sine x plus cos x plus the constant of integration. So there is also an alternative method and we call this the method of using a simplified form of integration by pass. And this method involves using a table. So if I'm give, want to integrate this expression of x cos x, what I'll do, I'll draw my table having a part of sine and a part of differentiation and a part of integration. So for the sine, it will have it will start with positive sine, then followed by negative sine, and then lastly a positive sine. So they keep on alternating positive minus positive minus positive minus until now the process continues until this part column of differentiation goes to zero. So in this case, when I differentiate x, my x was under the part of differentiation because cos x I can easily integrate it. Now when I differentiate x, I'll come up with one, which is here, and when I differentiate one, I'll come up with zero. So that means that this is where I should stop. Now I'll go to the part of integration. So I've first put my this cos x here now when i integrate cos x i'll come up with sine x and when i integrate sine x i'll come up with negative cos x so in that case i'll have filled in the values of the table now how do i use these values like you see these arrows you will say positive times x to get positive x then multiplied by sine x to get positive x sine x so in the end that means i'll come up with x times sine x now here there is negative times one to give you negative one which is here then multiplied by negative cos x which is here but don't forget the constant of integration so in the end when i simplify i'll come up with x sine x plus cos x plus the constant of integration and i think realize that this answer is similar to the previous one we got using the formula so whether i use the formula or use the table the answers will be the same the only difference is that this one is limited to integrals which can easily be whereby the one which is not a polynomial can easily be integrated in cases where the one which is not a polynomial cannot be easily integrated then you cannot use this method for table now we shall go to problem two problem two says that find the integral of x sine x cos x with respect to x so the first thing I remember from double angle is that 2 sine x cos x is equal to sine 2x. Therefore, by this side I don't have a 2 which means that sine x cos x will be equal to a half sine 2x. But there is also x here so it will become a half x sine 2x with respect to x. So this integral is the same as this integral. So in this case, I've got a product of two functions. Now, a half x is a polynomial and sine 2x is not a polynomial, meaning we have to use the method of integration by parts. So shall first, in this case, sine, the one which is not a polynomial can easily be integrated. And also this one which is a polynomial can easily be integrated. So in that case, you take the one which is not a polynomial to be equal to dv dx. Now the polynomial will be equal to u. So we shall say that let u be equal to a half x and dv dx be equal to sine 2x. So when I differentiate u, I'll come up with u dx being equal to a half. 
and when I integrate this, I'll come up with v being equal to negative a half cos 2x. However, that I'll have to remember my formula for integration by parts and then substitute. So u dv dx, u is here, which is a half x, and dv dx is here. So in the end, I'll come up with this integral of u dv dx will be equal to the integral of a half x sine x which was the given integral but it's equal to uv so i'll have to look for u which is a half x and v which is negative a half cos 2x and multiply the two so when i apply the two i come up with this part minus the integral of v du dx so i'll have to look for v which is negative a half cos x and du dx which is a half and multiply the two to get this part which they want. So when I simplify, I'll come up with the integral of, I'll come up with negative one over four x cos x plus a quarter integral of cos two x with respect to x. And when I integrate cos 2x, I'll come up with a half sine 2x. But remember there is a quarter outside, so I'll say a quarter times a half sine 2x. And when I simplify further, I'll come up with an expression of the whole integral being equal to, value of the integral being equal to 1 over 8 sine 2x minus 1 over 4x cos 2x plus c. So this method, this integral can also be solved using an alternative method which involves using a table. I think you remember that I said in cases where the function which is not a polynomial can easily be integrated, then it implies that you can also use this alternative method of using a table form. So in this, like we said, you put the three columns, one for sign, another one for deriv differentiation, another one for integration. For sine, you start with plus, then go to minus, then plus, and the process continues until you stop. Now, how do you know where to stop? The, you, you know where to stop by using this column of differentiation. So you have to differentiate until you get zero. So in this case, we are given a half x. When I differentiate a half x, I'll come up with a half, which is here, when I differentiate a half, I'll come up with zero. So that means that I have to stop on this row. Then now that I've finished this part of column of differentiation, I'll go to the one of integration. For integration, I'm given this part, which is sine to x. And when I differentiate sine to x, I'll come up with negative a half cos to x. When I differentiate negative a half cos to x, I'll come up with negative a quarter sine 2x. Now that I've filled the table, uh, I'll go ahead to use the table. So the table is, how is it used? Posit it means that this times this times this will give you this. For example, this will be neg positive a half x times negative a half cos 2x, which is this negative a positive a half x times negative a half cos 2x. Then here there is minus a half times negative a quarter sine 2x, which is this, minus a half times negative a quarter sine 2x plus c. So when I simplify this, I'll come up with this, and when I bring this part, this side, I'll come up with negative 1 over 8 two, sine 2x minus a quarter x sine 2x plus c which is equal to the same to the value we got in the using the previous method so whether i use this alternative method or the one for integration by parts it is still the same so now we shall go to problem three problem three says that find the integral of actan x with respect to x so in this case, what you should realize is that here it's also still a product of two functions, only that the polynomial is 
1 so if so this integral is the same as 1 times arctan x so in that case arctan x cannot easily be integrated therefore we shall let it to be u and the one and the, in that case we shall let 1 to be equal to dv dx so that you can easily integrate 1 so dv let dv dx be equal to 1 meaning that v will be equal to the integral of 1 which is x and therefore u will be equal to arctan x now let us see how to differentiate arctan x first of all you have to bring the arctan this side to come up with x being equal to tan u which is that now from there i can now differentiate x with respect to u and now differentiate tan u i come up with 6 squared u now 6 squared u is the same as 1 plus tan squared u and you already know that tan u is equal to like from here tan u is equal to x that means that 1 plus tan squared u is equal to 1 plus x squared and from there now that i've got differentiate got the udx i'll x I'll substitute in my expression for integration by parts. I already know that u integral of u dv dx. Now u is here and dv dx is this. So when I multiply the two, I'll come up with a given integral of arctan x. And to be equal to uv. Now u is u is this arctan x and v is x so when i apply the two i'll come up with x arctan x minus the integral of v du dx so now v is x and du dx is this one over one over one plus x squared so when i apply the two i'll come up with x over one plus x squared so I'll come up with my answer as x arctan x minus a half lean in brackets 1 plus x squared. Now this a half lean in brackets 1 plus x squared will be the integral for x over 1 plus x squared. I think we saw that from in the previous tutorial of integration using natural logarithms. But don't forget the constant of integration c. So now we shall go to problem 4. Problem 4 says that find the integral of lean x with respect to x. So still here, there is an imaginary 1. And this time, lean x cannot easily be integrated. So we shall let u be equal to lean x. And this 1 which is invisible will be equal to dv dx. That when I differentiate lean u, I come up with 1 over x. And this side, when I integrate 1, I'll come up with x. So v is x and u dx is 1 over x. And then from there, I have to quote the expression for integration by parts. Now u dv dx is u is here, dv dx is here. When you apply the 2, you'll come up with a given integral. I think we realize that they are the same. Is equal to uv. So I have to look for u and look for v. Then when I apply the 2, I'll come up with x lean x minus integral of v du dx. I have to look for v and multiply it with du dx. So when I apply x times 1 over x, I'll come up with 1. So in the end, I'll have to get the x value for in the integral for 1 with respect to x. Now when I integrate 1, I'll come up with x. So in the end, I'll come up with my value expression for the given integral as x lean x minus x plus c which is a constant of integration so we shall go to problem 5 problem 5 says find the integral of x log 10 log base 10 of x with respect to x so in this case, the first step is to change this base to base E because we already know that log, logarithm of base E is the same as natural log. 
So how do I change from base 10 to base e? This is how I do it. It should be log base e of this x which is here divided by log base e of this original base which is 10. Then from there remember that log base e is the same as natural log so I put replace it with lin to become x lin x over lin 10 which is that. Now I can go ahead and integrate. So I that means that this integral is the same as this integral. We have pulled out the constant which is lin 10 from here. So lin 10 is a constant so shall remain with x lin x inside the bracket of the integral. So in this case I have to integrate x lin x. I think you realize that this one is a product of two functions where one is a polynomial and the other is not a polynomial. Therefore we shall use the method of integration by parts and in this case the one which is not a polynomial cannot be easily integrated this one cannot be easily integrated therefore we have to let it to be u and this polynomial will be equal to dv dx now when i differentiate this i'll come up when i differentiate lin x i'll come up with 1 over x and when i integrate x i'll come up with a half x squared now that I've got that, I have to remember the expression for integration by pass and substitute. Now u dv dx, u times dv dx will give me the given in required integral. It will be and to be equal to uv. Now I have to look for u which is lin x and v which is a half x squared. And when I multiply the two, I'll come up with a half x squared lin x minus the integral of v du dx so i'll have to look for v which is a half x squared and multiply it with du dx which is 1 over x to give me this part and i think you realize that this one they have something in common and therefore one x will cancel x the, uh, at the denominator will cancel with one x at the numerator to remain with a half x so in the end we have to integrate a half x with respect to x. So this was the previous step and when I simplify I come up with integral of a half x and when I integrate a half x I come up with a quarter x squared. So in the end my answer will be a half x squared lin x minus a quarter x squared plus c which is the constant of integration therefore this logarithm of sorry the integral of x log x base 10 will be equal to 1 over lin 10 integral of x lin x dx i've already got the integral for x lin x dx as a half x squared lin x minus a quarter x squared plus c so I'll come and substitute to get the whole, the, this integral being equal to 1 over lin 10, which is this, multiplied by this integral whose value is this, which is equal to, open brackets, 1 over 2x squared lin x minus a half x squared plus the constant of integration. So you have tried, so it's now your turn to try out the following problems. So that is problem one. So try it out and compare answer with that. That is problem two. Try it out and compare answer with that. That is problem three. Try it out, compare answer with that. So that is problem five. So problem four. So try it out and compare answer with that. That is problem five. Compare answer with that. That is problem six. Compare answer with that.
that has been our lesson for today thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel roa e-learning platform thank you